We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. The consent of the governed, the willingness of a people to accept the authority of a government, that is one of the foundations of our society. The American people must be able to trust their government and federal employees. The men and women who represent that government are responsible for protecting that trust. Our nation has grown and prospered for more than 200 years. In today's diverse and complex society, the government and its many activities affects the lives of all Americans more than at any time in the past. That is why it is so important to listen to the people and to act. Our whole system of government, which came up through the spoil system, causes us not to trust public people as much as we should. But I think it has to be, uh, I think government workers have to, uh, in general, including myself, have to start believing that it matters. I have no confidence in the bureaucracy. Well, I would just, I would just like for them to do their jobs as best they can and uh, try and be as honest as they can. Oh, I have a great deal of trust in the government, yeah. yeah. Trust really is when you trust the other fella instead of yourself. But the way things are today, you cannot trust actually anyone. Oh, they have to. I mean, we have to have trust in the, uh, the systems that we've created. Either we have to break down the system and begin a new one, or we've got to trust and reform the one we have. Policies of the government only become real in the daily individual actions of you, federal employees. Your personal integrity and high standards of conduct are essential for the government to function effectively. Federal employees must work for all of the people with fairness and impartiality that is beyond all appearance of impropriety. The tradition of public trust, as old as our nation, is a high honor which begins anew as each federal employee assumes his or her public responsibilities. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Oh, it's enough. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's go. go. Okay. How about lunch? Huh? How about? I can't, Tim. I'm too busy. It's the end of the fiscal year. Tim, these shirts really worked out well today. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Listen, I'll try and get a better size next time. That thing looks a little loose on you. Oh, by the way, I wanted to tell you, I really appreciated using your cottage last weekend. Debbie really loved it, and I got to take my son fishing for the first time. It was really great. Hey, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Look, feel free to use it anytime. Thank you. Hey, that is really sharp. What is that, another new suit? Ed is about to be caught in a difficult position between his responsibility as a federal employee and his desire to help a friend in a jam. Hey, you got a couple minutes now, maybe I could talk to you? It's kind of important. Gee, Tim, I don't know. Uh, I'm in a hell of a bind today. You don't know all the juggling that I had to do just to come to play basketball. Just, uh, you know, a couple minutes, round two. Uh, well, like I said, I'm really busy, but for you, Tim, I'll try. Hey, great. Come on, let's go. Hi, Tim. Hi, Sally. My, you sure look great today. That's oh, a great outfit. Thank you. I just came by to see Ed for a few minutes. Oh, he's in having lunch. Let me bust Hey, him. don't bother. I'll just go on in. He's expecting me. Okay, fine. Ed. Hi, Tim. Come on in. Have a seat. Thanks. Oh, got enough of these? <laughs> Are you kidding? Look at this. <laughs> uh, just trying to take care of my people, you know. Thanks. Okay, what was so important that you just had to see me today? Well, listen. 
Tim works for Superbo, a large contractor. He has a proposition for his old friend Ed, who is a government program officer. He knows that the fiscal year is drawing to a close and remembers from working with Ed in the government that new ideas always sell better at the end of the year. Listen, I'm coming to you as a friend. I need your help this time. I know this morning when we talked, it looked like things were going great for me. But let me tell you, things are slipping. My contracts are not coming in. My charts are on a downswing. And if I don't get your help, that's why I came to you as a friend. You know, I know you got the money, and if anybody's got it, you got the power to do something about it. Come on, Tim. Don't put me on the spot. You know I don't have that kind of power. But this is Tim. You know me. You know I'll deliver a quality product. Look, here's a way we can do it. You submit a sole source contract. All right, we'll come in really low. Then we can make our real money later on on the contract modifications. Look, Tim, you're really putting me on the spot. Look, I'll see what I can do, but I really can't promise you anything. Hi, this is Ed. Is that requisition I sent to you ready yet? It's been about a week, hasn't it? Bernie's on his way up to see you right now. In fact, uh, he should be there. Oh, he is? Thank you. Oh, Bernie, come on in. Have a seat. Thanks. What's up, Bernie? Ed, I just wanted to come tell you personally before the memo got to you. I'm not going to be able to approve your requisition. Why not? Ed, I've given it every possible benefit of the doubt. But this requisition's a real turkey. How did you ever expect it to go to Superbo anyway? They've done great work on the big contracts they've had, but now they want to shift into something they haven't even done before. But Bernie, it'll give them a chance to expand their market. <laughs> Not through Uncle Sam. Not if I have anything to do about it. I just don't understand it, Ed. It's a waste of money. Besides, it wasn't even in your budget for this year. Why the change? Look, Bernie, when I put this budget together, I didn't happen to have a crystal ball. OK, let's try it next year. But Ed, their proposal just doesn't make sense. At least, if we wait till next year, we can get more specific information from them and other contractors, too. Look, Bernie, I've made a decision, and I'm sticking with it. What do you have against Superbo anyway? Why, why the vendetta against them? There's no vendetta, Ed. I just don't have enough information. And frankly, the information I do see is fishy. Like what? Few aspects of government service place more demands on the federal employee in relation to the standards of conduct than contracting. Every employee who is involved in this process, from the inception of an idea to the closing of the file, will have difficult decisions to make. Buck stops here. I'm sorry. Look, Bernie, we are not getting anywhere. This is one case where I think I'm going to have to go over your head. Honest belief in a company can easily lead to partiality. Personal relationships with a contractor may make the impartial judgment of a competitor more difficult. The examples are as varied as the contracts themselves and present many gray areas where the most careful individual judgment must be applied if fairness and the interests of the public are to be served. The personal integrity each individual brings to the demands of all phases of contracting is the most important element in living up to the standards of conduct. How is your integrity tested in the work you do every day? Oh, Bob, there you are. Hi, Sam. Thanks for picking me up. My old boss shouldn't have to bother with looking for a cab. Oh, thank you. Oh, by the way, did the model arrive okay? Oh, it's perfect. It's up in my office. It's just fine. Oh, great. Sam, this Springfield proposal is the most exciting project I've worked on. I'm really counting on you to make sure it doesn't fall through the cracks. Listen, if the finished product is as good 
As the outline you showed me, it'll stand on its own merits. As good? It's not only as good, it's better, bigger, but a little more expensive. More expensive? That could be a problem. I told you about the budget limitations last month. Well, you know how those things are. But wait until you see the plans. Okay. So how are you really, Sam? How's life in the big city? Well, pretty much the same. Job is great, learning a lot. Springfield is still home. You know this project will generate a lot of important jobs for well-qualified people. Incidentally, there's a line in next year's budget for planning coordinator that could have your name on it. Come on, Bob. That seems a little unlikely, doesn't it? I'm serious. You've paid your dues here, and the city can use your experience. Be nice to go home again. Okay, we can talk more about this when we get to the office. Well, let me show you. Ah, yes. Now, here it is. Sam, this is you. This is the new planning and development office, right in the heart of Springfield. You know, the one that you're going to help rebuild? Wait a minute. I only make recommendations. The director makes the final funding decisions. Now, Sam, you and I both know that your recommendation can tilt the decision one way or the other. It's a good plan. Problem is, it is so expensive that if we fund this one, somebody doesn't get a dime. We have got so many good ones this year, we could spend the budget five times over. And tell me the truth. Don't you think you've got some frills in here? Well, maybe, Sam. There may be a few things you might call frills. But, Sam, let's face it. These are the things that make the project go smoother. Okay, Sam. But please think about it. I will think about it. I've got to go. Thank you, Sam. Bye-bye. Sam, did the final Springfield proposal get here? This is it. Oh, good, good. Look, Sam, I know this is going to be a hardship for you, but I have to have your recommendations first thing in the morning. I just have to know how many projects we can fund this year. Okay. Okay, thanks, Sam. Swell. Congratulations, Sam. You got the whole package for us. I did my best. Let's walk up and see where your new office is going to be. Fantastic. Come on. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes, that's correct. We did fund Springfield, and I know it's expensive. But it was a very good project, and I'm sorry we didn't have enough money left over for you. Now, when we get the appropriation for next year... Next year? What do you mean, next year? Samantha, we need help now. There are a lot of disappointed people out here, Sam. We were really counting on you to get that grant for us. And one more thing, Sam. It looks like there won't be any new jobs in Springfield after all. Good morning, Sam. Oh, good morning, Mr. Miller. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Have you had a chance to finish reviewing the Springfield proposal yet? Oh, yes. I went over it last night from top to bottom. Well, what's the verdict? Well, it wasn't easy. But I'll tell you what I think we ought to do. See, in this afternoon... Samantha is in a difficult position. What do you think she should have recommended? work for a couple hours tonight. I've got about two or three more hours of editing to do on this documentary movie that we're putting together. 
I really don't like working at night, but I don't have any choice. I'm, you know, the guy, my boss wants to get it done, and I guess we've got to go in and do it, so. Thanks for the ride, Carrie. Okay. Hey, why are you going out with this guy anyway? I know you don't like him. Don't you have work you have to do? Yeah, but you're my little sister. I'm just watching out for you. Well, it's only for dinner. I'll call you, okay? Okay, have a nice dinner. Okay, bye see bye. you later. Is this the best you have? Yes, it is, sir. Then it'll be fine. Thank you. Hi, Ron. I hope I'm not late. No, not at all, Diane. Please sit down. Enjoy your dinner. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, it's nice seeing you. Would you like a drink? I love one. So how have you been, Diane? I just fine. How about yourself? Oh, very busy. Very busy. How about you? Busy too. Oh, good. Champagne, what's the occasion? Well, Diane Simmons finally said yes to a date. Ron is a bright young attorney for a government agency working on an important and confidential criminal investigation. He is also, as you may have noticed, trying to make points with Diane. In trying to impress Diane, he talks more about his work than he should and ignores the rules of confidentiality. Job-related information often seems commonplace to us because we have contact with it every day. But it may be very useful information to someone else. I just can't believe it. Well, it is hard to believe, but important heads are going to roll in this town in a few weeks. Enough business talk, Diane. I know a nice, quiet little place we could go to after dinner for a little relaxation, a little talk. Like where? Hello, Mr. Allen. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's happened? Sure, just a second. Yeah, go ahead. I'm ready. She said what? Well, that's incredible. That's great. Yeah? You know, right. Hey, listen, I'll get on it right now. Great. And I'll see you soon. Okay. Right. Bye. Diane, I hate to do this, but I'm going to leave. Uh, Something big has happened on that case I've been telling you about. Okay, I'm sorry. I really wish we could have had dinner together, but the champagne was wonderful, though. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Listen, I'll call you. Can I get you a cab before I leave? Oh, no, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Oh, may I use the phone, please? Of course, madam. Thank you. Terry, hi, this is Diane. Can I drop by to see you for a few minutes? Mm -hmm. Be serious. Don't ask questions. Just stay right where you are. Mm -hmm. OK. Have I got a scoop for you? Wow, there's more here than what I really thought. Good morning. This is Carrie Simmons at the District Courthouse with the TV 27 News Exclusive. We have learned today that Commissioner John Williams has possibly been involved in a bribery scandal involved. Hello. Hello, Ron. Yeah. Have you seen the morning news yet? No, I haven't. Just a second. The Universal Paving Company and County Bridge and Steel. Chairman Williams, who is now in his fifth term on the commission, was once a member of the board of directors at Universal Paving Company. Commissioner Johnson oh, was narrowly won a election in a hard-fought campaign. 
Commissioner Franklin's left. Ron, we've got big problems. You better get down here fast. We're in a hell of a lot of trouble. The investigation isn't complete. There's a leak. We've sure got a lot of explaining to do. Ron, we are the only ones who do. It is important to remember that the disclosure of confidential information isn't always linked to financial gain. It can be the result of carelessness, the very human desire to impress family or friends, or the age-old motive we have just seen here. Are any of you entrusted with information that seems routine to you, but could be of special interest to someone else? Think about it. John, all I'm saying is we have got to take action now. If we wait any longer, we're going to be in big trouble. We can't stop production. Once this contract is finished, then we'll make the necessary modifications. John, look at this. The facts speak for themselves. Unless we make those pollution control adjustments now, you know what's going to happen? They're going to shut us down. The feds are on my back day and night as it is now. Then it's up to you, isn't it? You know my position. It's your turn now. Your production bonus may depend on hey, I've always done you a good job. You know it. I know what you're saying. And I'm saying it's up to you to take care of it. That's all. Just take care of it. talk about productivity. Okay, but make it brief. This equipment that was supposed to be here hasn't arrived. I don't know what's wrong with it. I don't know. Yes, David. Mr. Conway is waiting to see you. That's that fed. I've got to go. I'm going to leave by the side door. You take care of me. Oh, glad to see you. How Hi. are you? Come on in. Come yeah. on in. Please have a seat. Okay. John couldn't be with us, and just please sit down. And right. I'll, uh... I just came from the river, and sure. I took these readings. And I think you better look oh. at them. Oh, yeah. You can see they're a little high again. Uh, a little, yeah. a little, I, I was a here little. last month and I told you about a this little. problem. Oh, I know, I know. And you know they have to be corrected. And they will be. I promised you that, you know that. I... Well, it's going to be corrected now. Sure, now, they, and it will be. Yeah, no, you don't understand. I'm taking these readings back to my office where a report will be prepared and sent here. And as soon as that report arrives, this plant will be shut mm. down. I need a little time, a little extension. We have worked to these I things out before. I thought I gave you the time last Yeah, and you month. did, and I appreciate it. It, it, was, it was kind of you. It was really nice of you. Things right now are tough. I'm sorry, but I got to think about what your company's doing to the river out there. I warned you the last time. The pollution content was reaching a dangerously high level. It is understandable for business to want to meet production schedules. A lot of people could be put out of work or otherwise injured economically if they don't. But the Congress has voted to clean up our rivers. Now it is up to Mr. Conway to get it done. And that's not always easy. No, wait. I, I don't think you understand the bind I'm under. I'm under a lot of pressure right now. As soon as that contract's over, I can't cut, I, I I can't cut productivity until then. Aren't there any I, I, options? I know about Aren't, your contract, but I have a job to I know that. I know that. I really got to go. Please, so. wait, wait. Paul, let's, let's talk. Please, sit down. Sit down. I'm, you you know the resources of this company. It's a going concern. Sure, sure. Is there any way, is there anything I can do to buy a month? That's all I need, one month. Buy? Think about it. If you could have anything in the whole wide world, 
What would you want? No, I want you to think a little bigger than that. No. no. Well, I got a surprise for you. Yeah, I know it's gonna be something you gotta love. Uh huh. It's something we both want. No? Just wait. You'll see. You'll see. Hey, I, I gotta go, okay? All right, I'll see you later. Hey, thanks, Leslie. Yes, Leslie. Mr. Bates wants to see you. He said right away. That figures. Well, what do, what do you think? Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't... Think about it. Think about it. I'll get back to you. Please, please. Uh, I'll sure. get back to you. Sure, please do. I'll be talking to you. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Take care. Mm hmm. Yes, uh, I'd like to speak to an investigator, please. Hi, uh, my name is Conway. I'm an inspector. And I think I've just been offered a bribe. Accepting a bribe is not only a violation of our standards of conduct, it is a serious crime. A crime punishable by a fine or a prison term, which, if proven, will destroy the reputation of the individuals involved. No matter how small the amount, accepting a bribe will surely do some damage. Remember, bribes are only offered when someone wants to undermine the public interest. Federal employees working in regulatory positions are prime targets for people who do not want the rules applied to them. Therefore, they are often faced with the greatest temptation to take a bribe and either commit a violation or to just look the other way. But think what that means. If a meat inspector takes a bribe, we will eat contaminated meat. If a federal aviation inspector takes a bribe, we will fly in dangerous airplanes. If Inspector Conway had accepted the bribe, the health of people using the river or drinking its water would be endangered. Are you protecting the public interest in your job? Could anyone try to tempt you to betray the public trust? Why don't you discuss it with your fellow workers right now? Be reasonable. We're researchers, not bricklayers. We can't predict exactly when we're going to get results on a biomass research project. You ought to know that. Or have you forgotten all these years you've been behind a desk instead of in a lab? Look, Jim, it's because of all the time I've spent in the lab that I know that this progress report is not satisfactory. Look, this is first-class work, and you can't say it isn't. It is as far as it goes. But at this rate, you'll overrun the contract by six months. Only 24 hours in a day. Well, look, you could easily have three, maybe four more people work on this with no duplication of effort. At that rate, the university could go broke, too. Look, you know Murphy's Law, everything takes a little bit longer. Jim, I don't work for Murphy. I work for the government, and that means the taxpayers. Look, don't give me the patriotic appeals. My rats can't take it. I need more time. Can't have it. At six months... No matter how much or how persuasively Jim argues, Barry has no choice. Representatives of both the university and the government understood the specifications, terms, and delivery schedule when the contract was signed. By insisting on adherence to the contract, Barry is not being unreasonable or difficult. He is simply doing his job fairly and impartially. Two months later, when Jim delivers an excellent final report on time, 
Barry can take satisfaction in knowing that the terms of the contract were met and the government received exactly what the taxpayer paid for. Look, Barry, we really needed that extension of time I was trying to get out of you. But anyway, we got it done. And you know it's had a terrific spin-off within the university. Oh, really? Yeah, the Biomass Research Association wants to put on a week-long seminar on this stuff in the spring. I'm recommending you. Me? Yeah. Would you be interested? It pays 2500 Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. Look, Barry, you may be a pain, but you know this field better than anybody I know. Think it over. No hard feelings? No hard feelings. Boy, Sue. I was really surprised. I mean, I had to lean on him for a long time to get that contract done. And he wasn't angry at all. In fact, he, he offered me a seminar. He's clever, isn't he, Barry? Clever? What do you mean by clever? Well, what are you going to do about next year's deadline? Once you've worked for him, it's going to be kind of hard to lean on him. He doesn't have that in mind. He recognizes me as a, an expert in the field of biomass research. And he wants me to do that seminar. Barry, I know he respects your ability. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I just think you should check with somebody to see if there's a conflict of interest. Why not start with personnel? Personnel? I don't think that's really necessary. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes this year's seminar on the state of biomass research. I want to thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. Great job. Hello? Hey, Barry. I'm concerned about the research project with the university. It's falling behind schedule. I'll check on it, Mrs. Fletcher. Jim's our project manager on that. He had it in last year on time. Hello? Very old buddy. Listen, I hate to ask you for an extension, but we need more time. Remember, any extension is absolutely impossible. Right. I knew you'd agree. Now let's cooperation. No! What do you mean, no? If they can't deliver on time, we'll shift the contract to someone who can. Do we have an extension? Or not? We can't do that. We certainly can do it. After the favors I've done for you, you won't help me now? No. No? What do you mean by no? Do you understand our position? Yes, yes, I understand. Stop changing your mind. Is it yes or no? Oh, it's got to be no. We can't do that. We can do that. Now, let's get something straight. OK, so you want to play dirty pool, huh? Well, I know someone who will be very interested. You know, Sue, Maybe you have a point. Maybe I should check with personnel. Miss James? Yes? I'm Barry Davenport. I called you this morning. Yes, how do you do? Please have a seat. Thank you. Well, as, as I described on the telephone this morning, uh, the reason I've asked to come in and see you is the problem has developed in my office which a co-worker has pointed out to me, uh, which could be also a possible conflict of interest. It is easier to generate suspicion than to dispel it. Conflicts of interest can be subtle. They might be just an appearance of conflict, but that makes them no less damaging, and the appearance is still a violation of the standards of conduct. The best course for the responsible federal employee is to never let even an appearance begin Yes, Mr. Davenport, it looks very much like a real conflict. If it isn't, it could certainly appear to be. You were right in bringing the problem to personnel. We can usually answer a number of questions, but in this particular case, the matter should be handled by our agency's designated ethics officer. Let me give you his name and number. 
And if you wish, I can contact him myself and explain your situation before you speak with him. Barry was right to seek official advice before accepting the outside employment which was offered to him. A course of action may now be developed which will ensure that both Barry's and the government's interests are protected. When in doubt, there are a number of places you can go for advice, such as the Office of the Inspector General, Office of the General Counsel, the Designated Agency Ethics Official, the Office of Government Ethics, the Personnel Office, or your supervisor. Don't wait until it is too late. I didn't hear you come in. How are you today? Hi, Marion. Is John in? Yes, but he's unavailable at the moment. Could I leave word for you? Would you please remind him that this is the fourth time I've tried to get his approval on the audit report this week? Okay, Mrs. Randolph, I'll remind him. Okay, Marion, keep trying. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Shibley. I can confirm our Wednesday appointment. No, it's not a problem. I'll just simply change my travel orders and that way we'll have plenty of time to discuss your income tax. No, it'll be easy. I'll fly out and meet with my headquarters people tomorrow, and I'll swing up to New York on Wednesday. Uh-huh. Yeah, 10 o'clock sounds fine. Okay, good. See you then. Bye-bye. Mr. Taylor. Hi, Marion. Mrs. Randolph came by. She needs to talk to you right away on those audit reports. Oh, yeah, I know. She didn't see what you were typing out there, did she? No, I don't think she did. Okay, good. Listen, I've just finished these time and attendance reports, and since I'm not going to be here this week, I'd like you to hand them in for me, okay? Sure. Thanks. Oh, I thought you were coming back on Thursday. Well, everyone thinks I'm coming back, and I'm really not, so we'll just let them keep thinking that. Okay. Uh, one other thing. Uh, Mr. Parks is coming to meet me at 1 o'clock. Um, when he gets here, I probably won't be here because I'm going to lunch now, and I won't be back till around 3. So when he gets here, just stall him. I don't care what you tell him. Just keep him happy till I get back. Sure will. Thanks. Mary, will you have those reports typed and copied for me by the time I come back? Well, I'm just about finished. Good. Oh, I need the money for the postage. Okay. I'll tell you what, don't worry about the money. Just put them in government envelopes and send them out. But, Mr. Taylor, all of these... Don't worry about it. No one will ever know the difference. See you later. All right. And there he goes again. For another four-hour lunch. And one of these days, we're going to get caught on these timesheets. Hi, Marion. When do you want to go to lunch? How about right now? Seems like everyone else is doing it. Huh? Are you OK? No, I'm, I'm really sorry. Can we still make it at noon today? That'd be fine. See you then. OK. out of it today. So John Boy doing this time? You working on his private business or on his wife's community project again? Well, you know, I really don't mind helping out a little bit. It take, doesn't take much time. I enjoy it. Besides, it's usually for charity. Marion, it's still on government time. Well, I guess you're right. I wouldn't mind if it were just a piece of paper, but he's running a business. Bottom line is that you and I are taxpayers, and we are paying for jerks like him to run a business. I'm not very hungry, Pam. Are you about ready to go? Sure, I've got to get back anyway. <clears throat> oh, there's Walter Parks. You go ahead. I have a message for him. Okay, bye-bye. Hi there, Mr. Parks. Hi, Marion. How are you? I'm fine. I have a message for you from Mr. Taylor. He knows about that 1 o'clock meeting that you have today, but he's going to be outside of the office till about 3 o'clock. Oh, no. Every time I have a meeting with that man, he cancels on me. I have to get his submission for the budget. 
Uh, how's next Monday look on his schedule? Well, he won't be back until Thursday. But he'll be there at 3? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cancel my other meeting this afternoon, and I will be there at 3. And I'll put that on the schedule, Thank sir. Thank you very oh, much, Okay, Marianne. goodbye. Bye-bye. See you. What's the matter, Walt? What a pain. You know the budget I've been trying to get out for the last three weeks? Well, her boss, every time I make a meeting with that man, he cancels it. I'm constantly making and breaking appointments on me. When a public office is used for private gain, it is obviously wrong. Furthermore, it may put other employees in an embarrassing or illegal position. But how completely can a person's private life be separated from their job? Sooner or later, this is a question each and every federal employee will have to answer. I think Tom's going to be driving this morning. He should be here any moment now. How are you today? I'm still tired. I hardly got any sleep last night. You know, Pam, this thing on the job is just getting to me. I feel as though I'm working for a private firm now instead of the government. Everybody that's calling is calling for his business, and he never has any more time for his own people. Marion, this cannot go on like this. You've got to do something about it. But I just cannot say anything. I'm not a tattletale. Besides, I, I just can't be bothered with that hassle. If you don't, Marion, someone else will, and then you'll have questions to answer, too. But why? I'm not his accomplice. Come on, Marion. You spend half your day typing his papers. You're continually making up excuses for him, and you use every machine in the office to conduct his business. But Pam, everybody else does that. Don't you do that for your boss? Are you kidding? If my boss asked me to do that, I'd turn him in so fast his head would spin. Oh, come on. Here's Tom now. Let's go. Good morning. Right? No, the traffic wasn't too bad. Here. What is this? It's the hotline number, just in case you change your mind. You don't have to tell them your name, and you can remain completely anonymous. Oh, Pam, for the sakes. How about lunch today? That'd be great. Okay, get about 12? Sure. Okay. See you. Bye-bye. Good morning, Mr. Taylor's office. Marion, this is John. Oh, hi. How was New York? New York was fine. I'm at the airport now, but I'm socked in. So what I'm going to do is drop off in Cleveland and talk to some people there. Oh, boy. Mr. Parks was here trying to see you again. You've already missed two appointments with him already, and he really needs to talk to you about that budget report. Marion, beg off for me on that, will you? This guy, Parks, is really starting to get on my nerves. But, Mr. Taylor, he's only trying to do his job. You're right. I'm sorry. Just tell him I was delayed by the weather, and I'll call him back just as soon as I get back. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Are you kidding? If my boss asked me to do that, I'd turn him in so fast his head would spin. And you can remain completely anonymous. 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 Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Hi, I'm Pamela Roberts. Oh, hi, Pam. I'm glad you could come down. Why don't you just have a seat right over here? Thank you. Mr. Davis, I'm not even sure that I should be here because, you see, I'm not directly involved with this problem. I can understand your apprehension. Uh, many people feel the same way. But as long as you have information uh, about it and abuse, you should report it. Good. Actually, Mr. Davis, I was even worried that you would think this 
problem was too trivial for you? Uh, any violation is important to us. Uh, we check out everything. Well, if I tell you everything I know about the problem, are you going to have to use my name? I doubt it. Uh, we can almost always establish the case without using a person's name. Uh, normally, other people know what's happening, too, so the tip could have come from a lot of people. Besides, there are many methods we can use to proceed. For instance, uh, we can schedule a routine audit or inspection. And in this case, it should be even easier to keep your name out of it. We've already had a phone call about this very subject, and we are discussing the direction we are going to take. Oh, really? Who called? <laughs> we were just talking about that. I can't tell you, Pam. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Of course you can't. I'm sorry. Uh, I have a list of questions that I'd like to go over with you, Pam, uh, to uh, bring out more details of what you're reporting. Okay, let's go over the questions. Complaining about another person is an action which in many ways seems to oppose our traditional respect for individual privacy. That's why there are so many negative words to describe it in our culture. But when you work for the public, you have a special obligation. Good morning. Is Mr. Taylor in? My name is Steve Maloney. Uh, yes, he is, but he's not seeing anyone today. Uh, is he taking another job? No, not exactly. Is there someone else I can speak with? Well, we are having a new director come in on tomorrow. It is not dishonorable for you to complain about a fellow employee's questionable ethics. In fact, it is your responsibility to the American public. When you believe that another employee may be violating the standards of conduct, you can obtain advice and assistance from the Office of the Inspector General, the designated agency ethics official, the Office of the General Counsel, your supervisor, or often from your fellow employees. Government service, public service, occurs on a worldwide basis. But no matter where you work or travel, or what your job level, as federal employees, you represent and define the concept of public trust, and your actions reflect on all other federal employees. The government is so big, it would be easy to rationalize that you don't make any difference. But of course, you do. Often, your actions will make a difference. Sometimes, part of the responsibility might be not what you do, but what you don't do like not talking carelessly about privileged government information, like not using your public office and the government's assets for private gain, or sometimes you just do the best you can in difficult situations, like not trying to bend the rules when an old friend asks you for a favor. The American people have a right to have confidence in their government. This program has been produced to remind you the men and women who make up the government must act in such a way that the citizens who have entrusted you with the public duty will once again feel confidence in your stewardship. Don't compromise. It is in your hands alone. <laughs>